Happy Phenomenal Fatherhood Friday, and welcome to another episode of Phenomenal Fatherhood, the podcast at the Woodlands Free Podcast Center. I am hosting, I'm Jeremy Hall, here with the interviewee Tillman Givens III of Phenomenal Fatherhood, the OG, the original Phenomenal Father. Welcome to your own show. <laughs> Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Looking forward to talking with you today about your fatherhood journey, lessons learned, some of the same topics, putting you on the hot seat. I hope you're ready for that. Uh, but first, there's some birthdays approaching and birthdays past that we need to shout out. First of all, our producer, Mike, he had the big one, the big 4-0. The big over the hill recently. I think it was last week's. So happy birthday, Mike. Happy appreciate birthday, Mike. Thank turn the. Wish we could turn the camera on you. Okay. Uh, and who else coming up has a birthday? Well, has I know. A birthday coming up. Is it you? Yeah, I know. I have a birthday next week. I think it's either Wednesday or Thursday. Whatever day it falls on, I know it's the twelfth. <laughs> September twelfth. Okay, I think that's Thursday because Remy's is September tenth, Tuesday. So happy birthday to y'all. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Appreciate that. A lot of We're about the same age. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're young and hey, how old are you this year? Chapter thirty six. Thirty six. Okay. Uh, Level thirty six unlocked. What's the biggest uh biggest accomplishment of last year? Of last year? Mm hmm. Hmm. That was twenty twenty three. Um I probably would say Biggest accomplishment was getting better, like actively getting better with grief. Mm, yeah, yeah. After my mom passed, that was probably like the best year. I finally broke through that atmosphere, you know, because everybody deals with it in different ways. And then you got to find your own way to kind of deal with it. But 2022, it just happened. I was wrecked the whole rest of that year. So it wasn't until 2023 that I was like, all right, let's try to figure out some active ways that people are approaching this. And then bake your own cake so to speak of how to make it work for you yeah unburden yourself that's um that's great that's very positive how about this upcoming year what's one thing what's one goal one thing you're looking forward to achieving in this trip around the sun 2025 or just uh chapter 36 chapter chapter 36 going out of the country for the first time mm, leaving the united states yep yep so, getting married to my fiance going out of the country for the first time I've uh, been to a lot of states, but I've never been outside the states, preferably South America or Thailand, somewhere over there. Um, Man. Philippines would be cool. But All as right. long as I'm out the country. <laughs> yeah, just look at the zones. Make sure it's not like red or like on fire or whatever the ones are where it's like a don't go because we want you to come back. Some of those places, you're getting a little far afield there. So let's keep it safe. Okay. Wherever it is that you go. Just read the um, travel reports, travel.gov before you go. Mm. And let us know. Drop a pin or something while you're, while you're over there. But uh, for real, you're going to love international travel and you're going to get uh, catch the bug, I hope, after. it. Um, okay, moving on, uh, highlighting your background, I want to ask you some questions. Uh, early childhood, first of all, where were you born? Houston, Texas. H-Town. Yeah. Where were you raised? Houston, Texas as well. What neighborhood? Uh, Greens Point. It was like, um, I don't even remember what it's called anymore. I think it's called Copper Creek. Yeah. Copper Creek. Okay. Yeah, it's Any, in Greens Point. Uh, little league organizations or elementary schools stand out from the early days? Uh, mostly Conley. So my first three years, I went to the classical school for brilliant children, which is the private school in the inner city, Houston. Okay. And then nice. fourth Love grade. The yeah, I know. It's like, makes me feel so prestigious. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and then fourth grade went to Conley elementary, which is right there between Copper Creek and Lincoln Green East over there in Greens Point. It's like five minutes from Greens Point mall mm -hmm. or what they call guns point. So I went there. But it's gone back and forth, you know? That's yeah. A, that's a bad moniker. Greens Point's fine with me. I used to love to go to Greens Point when I was a kid. Yeah, no, it's, it was awesome. Got a lot of great deals there. But fourth grade was when I met Mr. Mez. So that was a, everybody has that pivotal teacher. You know what I mean? That's just the one that stuck out to me. So that was well, good. Shout out to her. Yeah. And how about um, higher education, formal education, high school, university? Yeah. So I think after that, fourth grade year, met Miss Tamez. She, uh, so what did she do? I tested into the magnet program. So then I went to Bethune Elementary for fifth okay. grade. Then I got into the magnet program, skipped a grade, 
went to Bethune, went to Carver High School, which is a magnet pri- high school that focuses on engineering and the arts. Uh, and graduated sports. from there. Any sports happening? They like actually don't sport. have sports. Yeah, the Carver Panthers don't have sports. So everything I played was either like a league outside of it or, you know, and it was like this weird thing where like all the other high schools were like, oh, you're at Carver. We didn't want you to come take our spot, you yeah. know. So it was like that whole thing going on. <laughs> I so I was on like, that as a homeschool kid. Yeah, so I just had to play in other leagues, you know, did some YMCA stuff, did a lot of basketball mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. did a lot of um, AAU stuff. Yeah, so that was really good. And then um, literally the very next summer, I was immediately going to college and university of, uh, no, ORU, or Roberts University, mm-hmm. which is a okay. private Christian college in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. Very beautiful campus. Uh, went there for a year, realized I wanted a full college experience, came down back to Houston, went to Lone Star for a year, and mm. then transferred over to U of H, which at that time was School of Bauer was number two on entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. So I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I just went for number two and the rest is history. Man, that's awesome. Well, um, that's quite a journey in education. How about your career? Give us the highlights of uh, what you started out doing, what you've done since then, kind of your resume, what you're doing now for uh, work. Yeah, well, the good thing is that uh, my sophomore year of college, I read this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I read this book, Mm. The 4-Hour Work Week. So I always was thinking, like, how can I get to the right side of the cash flow quadrant and how can I do it using the Internet? You know what I mean? Nice. And So those two things, I was like, how can I combine this? So in the book, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki talks about working for Xerox and learning how to do sales. So I worked in the gym industry, and if people Mm -hmm. think that, you know, selling a table or selling a microphone is hard go out here and try to sell the american public on living a healthy lifestyle at a gym that's Mm -hmm. a hard sell you know what i'm saying yeah so i worked there for years eventually got promoted to be an assistant general manager was operating a fifty thousand square foot facility worked in the gym industry for a long time super uh passionate about help health and fitness so that was easy for me you know Mm -hmm. so that was really good i've seen Um, you in that role I've done that. I've worked in property management. I've had a lot of different jobs. At one point, I was like in between jobs. I worked as a temp agency, like cooking fries at NRG Stadium, you know. And even then, I was like, I'm going to cook the best fries. Atta like boy. Like even the chef was like, dude, why are you so serious about these fries? I was just like, because, man, I'm sowing a seed right now. Yeah. Like when I have my employees, I want them to work hard. So I'm going to work hard even this in this position that seems very minuscule. You know what I mean? Whatever you do, do it uh, as unto the Lord, whether it's cleaning your house or cutting your grass or working in the job that you thought you'd never have. You know, you've really got one boss at the end of the day. So, yeah, amen to that. Yes, sir. Cook, cook, Cook the best fries. And now you're not cooking fries anymore. I heard you say you've done manual labor work, too, some back breaking type. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, but what about that? <laughs> I try to put that out of my mind. Right. I actually did construction for a while, so yeah. I ended up breaking my ankle during construction. But it actually ended up working out because I was uh, I broke my ankle during construction. They put me on light duty, so I was sitting at a table like this, making these wires that go inside these lights. But it was for commercial buildings, so I had to make like two thousand. Like they might be like, "Hey, can you make two thousand of these?" So you might be doing it for like four days straight, just stripping wire, cutting it, making sure it's the right size. And I'm just got one leg up, sitting there on light duty. But during that time, I would plug my phone in and I would be on YouTube University, just yeah. learning how to do SEO, learning about digital marketing, learning about all the stuff I'm doing right now. So that was very pivotal in that time, even though it seemed like it was very, you know, non essential. Well, you were in uh, productivity jail, so to speak, and so you got your learning on while you're in there, and uh, kudos to you for that. Uh, Okay, uh, really quickly, we got a couple of, uh, about a minute left in this segment. What do you do now? And then I want to move on to your family real quick. Yeah, so right now I have a digital marketing agency, so we do websites, SEO, ads, anything that has to do with increasing a business's online presence. Where would we find that? Uh, tntsuperiormarketing.com okay. you can book a meeting from there fill out a form from there it's a beautiful site so okay. check it out anything else career-wise that you want to share in uh, your journey renewable energies anything um oh yeah yeah i worked in solar uh during 2022 did over half a million dollars in finance products working for a publicly traded company eventually became a corporate sales trainer for that publicly traded company so that was pretty fun learned a lot during the end learned a lot about leadership 
And so now, Phenomenal Fatherhood. Uh, tell people about that. What's your mission really quickly, and how do people find you if they want to connect with Phenomenal Fathers? Yeah, I think so. The Phenomenal Fatherhood in general is broken down into three main concepts. And like the first one is just the mindset, like adopting the mindset of being a phenomenal father. The second part is the mission. Us as guys making it our personal mission to be a phenomenal father. And then the last part is the movement, which is all about the community, which you can find at phenomenalfatherhood.com. We just added the video library as of Labor Day. So I'm super proud about that. Awesome. And then we can go in there and tap in. Okay, well, hopefully this is going to be on it. I'm Jeremy Hall here with Toman Givens. We're coming at you from the Woodlands Free Podcast Center, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to episode two of the Phenomenal Fatherhood Friday podcast. Happy Phenomenal Fatherhood Friday. I'm Jeremy Hall here with our guest, the Phenomenal Father Toman Givens III. You. And we're going to put him on the hot seat immediately. So he knows the goal is to answer these 25 or so questions in the fewest ticks of the clock that he can. So are you ready, Tillman? Estas listo. Okay. That's Spanish. <laughs> How do you Somebody spell will. phenomenal? P-H-E-N-O-M-E-N-A-L. All right. Uh, Phenomeno. Ding, ding. I'm going to say correct because I don't know. What's <laughs> the? <laughs> it actually has the word men in it. What's your, and that's a good tip, what's your favorite nickname that you've ever had for yourself? Oh, man, that's tough. I would say it's a toss-up between Black Ice and Trill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love those. Uh, wisest words heard from your parents? Uh, work is unto the Lord. Amen. Yeah, that has carried me far. If parenting were a fruit and it was a blueberry, what fruit would co-parenting be? Coconut. Okay, I like it. Uh, very uh, dissimilar, I would say, in both color, size, taste. Okay, uh, let's get political. Who's that lady running for president? Uh, Betty Boo. No, the... Uh, Kamala Harris. Kamala. Oh. Is it Kam Kamala? Kamala. Kamala. Okay, it's just three syllables. It's, why can't people get that right? <laughs> okay, this question is not who are you voting for. It's a VP pick -em. Walls... Or Vance? Walls or Vance? Who, who do you like in, in the VP game? Walls or Vance? Vance. Who's your guy? Vance? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Walls. He has a wal waltz. He should just go with waltz. Okay. Uh, JD Vance, your guy, needs a signature dance to win the election. You're his choreographer. Give us the Vance Prance. Let's see it. Give us your vet <laughs> to the Vance Prance. J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance. Vance Prance. Okay. Hey, hey, a little Millie I Rock think in I, there. That, that tips the scales in his favor for show. Yeah. All right. Favorite Olympic moment from this uh, past Olympics? Men's gold for sure. Redeem team bringing it back Redeem home. team. Balling. Yeah. Okay. Uh, favorite mascot of all time? Ooh, I probably would say Clutch. Mm, clutch the rockets yeah bear. so many childhood memories of clutch you know turbo as well was oh in there turbo with, with the yeah. Dunks. yeah shout out turbo h down again with the cape yeah <laughs> came to our high school i don't know if he was down in your area but yeah he he got the gym riled up yeah. all right uh favorite gym day gym day favorite back back yeah. least favorite uh my least favorite probably legs i guess Le yeah <laughs> I it takes so there. much out of me. It does. It's exhausting, and the next days are, are sometimes tough. One kid character that you would retire. Just can't cancel that character. I don't want to see that thing anymore. Uh, maybe Miss Rachel. Miss Ra Hey, all right. I'm there. I'm right with you, dude. Let's yeah. See. I just retired her. Uh, describe <laughs> your current uh, place, position, status in your spiritual journey in a word or phrase. Elevated. Hey, amen to that. Yep. Uh, what are you most excited about at church right now? Journey together. Journey yeah. together. Hey, that's a theme. That's part of our motto. Yep, yep. That's number two. That one hit me really hard. You know what I mean? I was just like, 2023, my theme was We Not Me. And it was all about creating a team of just like not leaning on myself. So when I heard that, it was a really great reminder. Yeah. Can't do it alone. Amen to that. We're connected. Uh 
What was the mo- back to another co-activity Fourth of July committee? What was the most unexpected moment? The thing you didn't expect most when volunteering on that committee? Mostly the day of the event, I didn't have like all the tools. It was like something that went wrong, and they were like, "Oh, we're gonna be on the rooftop." I'm like, "What?" And then it was like, "Oh, by the way, you don't have this other thing." I, I don't even remember what the thing was, but it was like something I really needed. And I needed to pivot, and then it was like a laptop charger as well. I was like, "Oh my god!" And then the phone was overheating. I was just like, "Ah, yeah." The, <laughs> the day of is always just a, a whirlwind, and it's hard to expect it even every year. Okay. Uh, Jump in and pick one of these cards All right. and then answer the question on it as quickly as you can. Actually, hand it to me. All right. I'm going to read it. What was your favorite childhood meal? Ooh, probably greens and sweet potatoes. Oh, all right. I like the sound of that. What I think I know this one. It's birthday related, I believe. What's, the, uh, what's a personal challenge that you've made to yourself recently? Uh, getting like a steady bedtime. <laughs> With the with the family, okay. Yeah. Um, favorite person that you've met recently? My favorite person I've met recently. Um, that's a tough one. Um, I might have to say a guy named Andrew Griffin the third. Okay, shout out Andrew. Uh, favorite Bible verse? Joshua one and eight. What does it say? This book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate in day and night, and there are trees should be planted like rivers of water, and there. Are Leaf shall not wither, but have everlasting life, or something like that. Wow, I mean, hey, it's a super long verse, that, but yeah, that's a that's a tough one to um, have as your favorite off the top. So, yeah, uh, great job. Favorite Bible character, Job. Job. Oh man, a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of suffering endured there. Yeah, uh, best parenting moment this week. Ooh, best parenting moment this week. Oh, I know, like uh, Taekwondo. Yeah. Yeah, my son, they, they started, ta- well, all three of them started Taekwondo on Wednesday night, and then my son didn't feel well. He still pushed himself through. Knocked a bunch of other kids out. No, it was just an introductory class, but the okay. fact that he didn't feel like going, still did it, and he showed up and, like, actually did it. Like, it was no half effort, you know what I mean? He even threw up at the end of the class. Ooh. And was just like, I'm you know, stayed home the next day from school. I was like, man. Whoa, okay. Yeah, he was not feeling well. But he definitely finished strong. And that's what I was more so happy pushed about. Himself. Yeah, that's that's good to hear. Well, yeah. um, good to hear that he pushed himself. Uh, biggest throw up your hands moment recently. Like, all right, I just can't right now. I need like an intervention. Ooh, like in terms of parenting or in general? In terms of parenting, where you just said, I mean, if it was Adam Sandler and spilt milk or just somebody that's not going to come get in the car, in my case. Um, I don't even know. Maybe you just needed a, a T.O. real quick. Things got too much. Well, that's good if you can't recall one. You've had Probably being sick. sick. Okay. Yeah, like when I got sick and I was just like, I'm so drained right now. I'm just like, put yourselves to bed and make yourself dinner. I don't even care. Just go in there and grab some crackers and call it a day. You <laughs> like, still got stuff you got to get done, but it's just you're not feeling good while you're doing it. Okay, pick another card and hand it to me. All right, here we go. Which is more important, the respect of your kids or your parents? And I know um, Ooh. you had a lot from your mom, and now you got your dad to, I guess... Hopefully you don't look at it as stay earning, but respect to your dad, respect of your kids. Uh, I would say my kids. Okay. Because oh, yeah, go ahead. Because yes. I'm 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 interacting with them on a larger percentage of my week, and they're so influential. I, I'm so influential into them that, yeah, that's like a more of a priority. Yeah, I actually don't like that one now because you do have the respect of both, and I feel like you'll always maintain that, but just. Logically and practically, I agree. You have to interact with your kids so much. You have to have maintain their respect. Uh, favorite uh, sing along church song. Hmm. Uh, favorite sing along church song. There's this one by Sydney Wine and it's called Believe. That's probably like sing my favorite a, one right sing now. Sing us a bar from it. It's like uh. <laughs> What we believe, yeah. Uh, what we believe for uh, it. Yeah, I think 
like I've heard it before now that well, somebody will Shazam that mid-show. I appreciate that. Remember, that voice is because I'm sick. I yeah. can really sing. No, y'all. I know Don't you get can. It I know you can sing. You went after a super high Mariah Carey level part right there, too. All right. Uh, favorite activity uh, to do with your kids? Ooh, my favorite activity? Man, that's tough. My favorite activity to do with them. Hmm. I like doing learning stuff with them. Um, okay. Educational activities. I used to like the trampoline park, but yeah, anything like learning. Like I really like when we did like the rich dad, poor dad game cash flow. That was pretty cool. Okay. That sounds um, like I feel like each one of them have their own. Like I kind of like cooking, you know, with them so they can kind of learn and do uh, that whole process with my son. I'm more so like playing basketball with him cause we both enjoy that same love. So I don't know. That's, that's, that's nice. Grown up, grown up activities. Favorite nicknames or any nicknames for your kids? Uh, I like you know T four, which is my son, or Quattro. Quattro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put some Spanish on it. Uh, and then um, my daughter Aubrey, I don't really know. She doesn't really have a nickname. You know, she doesn't really have a nickname. Okay. Uh, sometimes she calls herself Sweet Potato, mm-hmm. and then Mia has a bunch of nicknames. So she has Mia, Mimi. Uh, poopy, like a bunch of different nicknames. So, oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, this Halloween, would you go as uh, Reggie Jackson? Hmm. Or what are my other options? Warren Moon. Warren Moon. Okay. Uh, AI. Alan Iverson. Yeah. Kamala Harris's uh, long lost son. Mm. <laughs> Betty Boo. <laughs> 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 Uh, why would one get one's car detailed in a rainstorm? Uh, availability. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we heard some other uh, bonus features as well. Or fruit snacks. Don't let your kids eat fruit snacks in the car. Favorite, uh, did you say your favorite birthday memory? Uh, you got a birthday coming up. What's one birthday from history? Uh, skydiving. My fiance got me a Groupon to go skydiving last year. That was... Groupon's a way to do it as well. Memorable. Yeah. Okay, last question. One word to describe fatherhood. Hmm. Journey. Okay. Tillman Givens, you're off the hot seat. Good job. Journey. We'll be right back from the Woodlands Free Podcast. Cue the flames. Cue the flames. Welcome back to segment three of Phenomenal Fatherhood Friday podcast numero dos with Jeremy Hall and Tillman Gibbons here from the Woodlands Free Podcast Center in the Woodlands, Texas with our producer, Mike. You also could be here at the Woodlands Podcast Center. Um, Check it out on their website. You can book a time and we've really enjoyed our time here. And thank you, Tillman, for joining me. The original Phenomenal Father. Tell us about your kids uh, their names, ages, uh, and what they're into right now. Okay. Well, one of the things that they're into is their YouTube channel, which is ATM. Whoa. Yeah. That's their initials. ATM family fun is their YouTube channel. So we'll go, uh, Aubrey. That's my daughter. She is, um, well, I guess she's into Taekwondo now, but you know, she's into like her dolls and stuff. I find it so interesting how like girls play like house so early. I'm like, dang, mm-hmm. whereas like boys, they just like, we don't think about family at all. So mm-hmm. that's like so interesting learning like right now at their ages. The instinct, um, yeah. Tillman, he's more so like, he's more of the little silent killer ninja type, you know, <laughs> he's definitely like uh Fortnite, you know, but he's super responsible though. He's the oldest, so he's super responsible. Like he comes in, gets all his chores done, knocks everything out. Definitely man of few words. You know okay. what I mean? Young man of few words. Good, um man. Fortnite and love Spider Man. Spider Man. Uh, huh? Spider Man and then he played like four seasons of basketball so far. So we'll see how he does in Taekwondo. I think Taekwondo is going to be where he shines though. Cause he's a big Naruto fan. He's not shout like out to Narito. Okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, as of lately, you've got an outlet for that. That's good to hear. And then the M and Mia, that's, uh, my other daughter. She's into, she's really good at drawing. Like, okay. yeah, she's very, the artistic one. 
Okay. You know what I mean? What so she, she can draw? like. Does she draw you art that you? She does. Okay. Yeah, nice. but she it's usually like memories or like future memories or past things or things that she creates. She just has a very creative mind. She loves to dance, loves to sing. You know, okay. we have videos of YouTube of us singing with a actual speaker microphone and stuff and just putting on beats and freestyling. So oh, that's been nice. really cool. We've recently been, I've been teaching her about ad libs, like what ad libs are. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we've been doing that. She's super creative um, from maybe. musically mm-hmm. and artistically. That's awesome. And maybe she can uh, come on and um, do some ad libs with us. And we have a, a whole box. Yeah. Uh, tell us about uh, your fatherhood journey initially. What was the one thing, if anything, that surprised you most about fatherhood? Um, I think that, you know, the biggest thing that surprised me probably was like how much of a change, you know, because it's like you, it's, it's hard for you to gauge when you don't have kids and everybody's like, oh, my God, your life is never going to be the same. But mm-hmm. you don't really know what that means yet mm-hmm. until the child's there. <laughs> Right. And then you're like, yo, like, I can't even go to the bathroom, bro. Like, yeah. this is like a totally <laughs> different life. Like, y'all should just say it's totally different. You know yeah. what I mean? Instead of just saying everything's going to change. It's hard to get the so, point across or the describe the impact of it. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, if you're somebody who's like organized or you're an A-type personality person or you're somebody who's like tries to stay on top of stuff, it's like the the biggest shock is like trying to get a pulse on it. It's like you never really feel like you got to really good grasp on parenthood yet until you're like two years in and you're like oh okay I think I, I'm starting to kind of get somewhere like after two years you've started to finally feel like okay all right I think I'm kind of getting finding just, some balance here yeah I can be myself or I've got a workable strategy I'm not just hanging on for dear life here yep just surviving I know exactly what you mean. Just waking up in the middle of the night screaming like, ah. <laughs> okay, everything's fine. Am I still at rest? Am I still off duty? Okay, uh, how has your personal life changed since becoming a father? Do you still have a personal life outside of your kids? I mean, it knows you apart from fatherhood. Uh, I do. Uh, I feel like more so I have like business associates though. Like a lot of my business associates have become my friends. But, you know, I have friends at church. I have friends that are dads. Through Phenomenal Fatherhood, I have that camaraderie. My business partner with Phenomenal Fatherhood, shout out to Kiran Brisbane. Mm-hmm. Um, I talk to him a lot. And that's really what it's all about, just being able to bounce ideas off each other or even just vent, quite frankly, sometimes. That's really, you know, what help you feel better. But um, yeah, you have yeah not vibrant. much of a just going out to the club or <laughs> doing all this other stuff I used to do in my 20s. Like, nah, right. that part is gone. Only worthwhile activities. But yeah, still having a, a robust personal life. That's, a good, uh, that's good to hear. What are some daily practices or disciplines that you found effective in your new allocation of time as a father? Mm. I'd probably say the gym. You know, I think that journaling is can be effective, but I'm mm-hmm. very guilty of going in these spurts. Like I would go like two weeks strong and then just fall off. You know what I mean? When it comes to the journaling thing and everybody tells me about different prompts and this and that. So that's something that I know I could actively get better at. But the gym is like for sure a cornerstone. Like even right now, I haven't worked out in five days because I've been overcoming this health challenge. But even with that, I'm like, man, I want to get back in the gym, you know, because mm-hmm. it's such a great outlet for you physically, mentally, spiritually. If you listen to an audio book while you're working out or listen to, you know, gospel music or listen to something that's going to uplift you or empower you while you're working out, then, mm-hmm. yeah, it'll definitely be that little slice of me time that you're looking for. Yeah, just getting over the hump, starting your day on a high note with overcoming, going, checking it off the list, you know, I think is a great way to get rolling yep. in the morning just whenever you can do it um so yeah i guess that's a stress relief or emotional outlet that you have is there anything else outside of the gym or maybe journaling maybe a recent practice that you found for um relieving stress or some of the things that build up and uh, may come out in negative ways if not addressed Mm, i would say Wait, can you ask that question one more time? Because I was going to say something totally different. Yeah, like a a release of stress or I guess maybe some of the emotional stuff that either kids put on you or just bearing burdens, a way to release that Mm. um, other than just going to the gym, like a practice. Yeah, 
I mean, it's kind of like a twofold thing, you know, like um, it has to be what I've realized over time that I wish I would somebody would have told me in the beginning is that you have to have like multiple tools in your arsenal, you mm-hmm. know, like because you can't go to the gym at three o'clock in the morning all the time. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I still struggle with getting frustrated, too. So just just I'm human, just like everybody else. But um, one of the things that helps, too, is like meditation, you know, whether it's like. And it doesn't have to be anything deep, like with your legs crossed and your fingers like, um, like anything like that. Like you could literally just meditate on a happy memory or a feeling or something like that, like going to the beach or whatever that for me is the beach. Like the beach is always that place where like I feel the most creative. There's fresh air coming off the ocean. I always feel vibrant. Um, it's your happy I'm, place. Yeah. I'm still a gamer. So I'll jump on Madden or NCAA recently, oh, like, uh, what's the other one? I can't hang anymore. I'm NBA 2K just came out. Ooh, I've been on that. So okay. I just, like, literally, the only thing going on in my mind is that I am a starting point guard and that I am an NBA superstar right now. <laughs> You're getting so, it done on that. Yeah, I put my headphones on and everything. Like, I'm locked in. And when I get done, I'd be like, oh, okay, we're back, you know. <laughs> Well, I know you've already uh, answered some things about uh, challenges overcome, lessons learned. Um, talk about uh, a role model or someone who's most influenced your p- approach to parenting. Uh, well, I know my dad, you know, I guess he would be the original OG, you know, because he's an awesome father. He's a phenomenal father for sure. Um, I think it's all about you know, taking what he gave me and taking that mantle and figuring out how I can carry it forward like a relay race mm-hmm. instead of just sitting on what he gave me. Now I'm kind of bringing what he gave me to the world. Amen to that. And, and not in name only, right? But you've yep. got that heritage as well just to be a daily reminder. Mm-hmm. But uh, one, but another person too is that when I was younger, I was a big fan of Martin Luther King. Mm. Like the fact that he got his master's degree at 26 years old, the fact that with no social media no other type of influences besides like literally walking out his house and speaking to people directly was able to lead an entire movement in addition to speaking in Washington and everything he was able to do before he was assassinated. So Mm -hmm. (coughs) every city's got an MLK. Yep. And for good reason, you know, and another, you know, Jesus and so many people, life was tragically cut short, but their influence uh, continues on. And just so inclusive, you know, you look back at some of the things he said and how everybody wants to pick a team nowadays, you know, that's mm-hmm. someone who resisted the opportunity to pick one team or another brought people together. So what a great role model. Um, any tips, do's and don'ts for new parents, people who are expecting or people who are considering whether they're ready for kids or not? Um, I would say that for, well, it's kind of like twofold. Well, m- most of the audience is men, right? So I would say that if it's something that you want to set up, like business-wise, like a lot of times I talk to younger guys and I, I don't think they understand like the magnitude of having a family And it's not really explained anywhere. So if it's like a business you want to set up, like do that now, like Mm -hmm. before you have kids, set aside some finances for that, but also like work on your past trauma, work on your healing, like your own personal healing. Like instead of going out, like go find ways to heal your, any emotional trauma you may have from your parents, your dad, your family, any of that stuff. Cause all that's going to spill over onto your children. Mm -hmm. Um, anybody who's expecting, then I would say, uh, similar to what I said last time, like get you a very good swing or make sure you put that in your baby registry. Cause if you don't have a good swing, you're not sleeping. Somewhere does the zone come out. Yeah. And make sure that you sleep when the baby sleeps. And, um, if you're a brand new parent, then I would say, first of all, it's going to get better. You know what I'm saying? It's going to get better. Uh, try your best to do whatever that thing is for you, whether it's like going to the nail salon, getting a massage, you know, going to the gym, but at least one hour a week, you got to be able to somehow take a pause, you know, Mm -hmm. even if it's just sitting in silence and just like zoning out for a little bit, um, that would be something I wish somebody would have told me. And if you're brand, brand new, get you a really good bottle sanitizer. Saves a lot of work at 3 o'clock in the morning. You got a good yes, bottle sanitizer. Yes, it does. It'll be used on repeat. And, yeah, uh, Kevin Hart, me time. That's uh, sound advice to the new parents who are redlining. Yeah. Okay, give us. Eat your vitamins <laughs> and your vegetables. 
some me time. Okay, uh, and stay in prayer and get connected into a church, I would say. Or yeah, two things for sure. that you're living right now. Um, <clears throat> before we close out and uh, take some closing thoughts, give us a goal or aspiration, uh, a picture of the future of fatherhood for you. Hmm. I think that, um, right now my biggest thing is just doubling down on what my goal was for August, which is just spending an hour with all three of the children together, an hour with each one of them individually. And the biggest focus, like I have a focus every month. So, I was reading a book about positive reinforcement and how it equates to love. Like basically people ask like what love is. And a lot of times it breaks down to somebody positive, positively reinforcing one's beliefs. The last podcast I did with my business partner, Kieran, we were talking about the voice that's in your head, how when you get older, you can still hear your parents voice. So how are you actively leaving that voice inside of your children, which goes back to the love, right? So how can you say, I want my children to feel loved, okay, that then what is love? Positively reinforcing, reinforcing one's beliefs. So what is their beliefs? It hasn't been, it's still being established by the voice that we leave in their head. Mm -hmm. So that's how the full circle, the full loop is closed. So that's what I'm actively working on right now is like the positive reinforcement, like I was saying with Taekwondo and my son, like instead of saying, I try to focus on positively reinforcing the actual character attribute that I want to continue instead of the actual action itself. So it's like, if I see him pick up a piece of paper, instead of saying, thank you for picking up that piece of paper, I'll say, oh man, good job for taking initiative. Mm -hmm. That's the principle that I want to continue the actual habit and positively reinforcing the um, behavior, but also positively reinforcing the character trait. Mm -hmm. which is a very simple shift, but it's a very powerful one. Absolutely. So that's my focus for August. Like during those times, okay, I set aside time for August. Now during those times, what can I identify as their five strengths for each child? And now I know what to look for, what to positively reinforce as I go through September. And I can focus on those things during that hour that I'm with them as well as see them throughout the day. Wow, that's some high-level uh, parenting advice right there. I love the focusing on the attributes, sort of the feedback that's in their head after they've done something good is very specifically tailored towards something that's applicable across the board in the future. And then pulling the strings out, the dedicated time, um, that is excellent. Do you have a phenomenal father that you'd like to shout out this week and just acknowledge who's doing a great job right now? Yeah, like I'll shout out my business partner, Kieran Brisbane. He has two kids, same age as mine. You know, definitely somebody who steps up. He has kids going to gymnastics, football, like all the different activities, oh. and he's doing it by himself. So he's a business owner as well and still being able to juggle everything he has going on with his kids. And, you know, we shot some stuff last week, which is on the Instagram, at Phenomenal Fatherhood. And, um so, yeah, shout out to him, man. He's definitely somebody who I use as a sounding board and who shows up for his kids on a daily basis, which is pretty dope. Yeah, well, uh, shout out to him and shout out to J.J. Donaldson as well, uh, wearing the Astros hat this week. So, H-Town, yeah. stay down. Uh, he got on to me for wearing the Phil's hat last week, and we got the T-hat in the background for Tillman Givens. Our guest of honor today, the OG Phenomenal Father. We appreciate you and everything that you do, creating this opportunity, and uh, for being the original Phenomenal Father. Happy Phenomenal Friday, Fatherhood Friday to you all. Jeremy Hall, I'll leave it to you. Tillman, do you have any closing thoughts or parting words? Yes. So whenever you guys get a chance, give us some feedback on the brand new website. A lot of work is going into it. Like I said, I have a digital marketing agency, so... My team and I are putting a lot of work into PhenomenalFatherhood.com. We just added the video library. It's going to be a massive site. So I've been working on this for quite some time, and I'm super excited about where it's going to go. So that's going to be super awesome. We're finally consolidating everything in one place. So instead of having the shop somewhere else, the shop's going to be on there. The vault's going to be on there. The video library is going to be there. At some point, we'll have different levels of membership on there that we can tap into. So it's going to be freaking epic, like nothing that nobody's ever done before in the fatherhood industry. So 
you heard my past as far as my work. So it's like everything I do is nothing like somebody ever done before. You can believe that. <laughs> so, it sounds um, like something you worked out. really hard on. Yeah, we look look forward to that. And um, tell people again how they can find that or get in touch with you. Yeah, just go to phenomenalfatherhood.com. Um, you can find it on Instagram as well. I think the link is in the bio, but it has more so of a link tree. Um, YouTube, and we're on TikTok at Phenomenal Fatherhood 2023. The other Phenomenal Fatherhood, I can't get into that account, so sorry. I don't know how to delete it, but it is what it is. If one of y'all can help me, help me. And make sure y'all leave a comment. Leave a comment about what you want to hear from us, too. I really be always saying that, but, like, women are super good about it. They'll just go in there and comment, comment, comment. Guys mm-hmm. will just be like, man, that was so cool, and then just go to the next video. I'll be like, leave a comment. Let me know it was cool. When you say it out loud in your head, we can't hear that, so just type it out. You Write know what I mean? Down. Yeah, so, men, women, one of uh, Elon Musk robots. I mean, we'll take we'll take any comments. Yeah, uh, let us know. Thank you for being uh, a gracious interviewee today. I am Jeremy Hall uh, signing off for Mike, our producer, and Tillman Givens the third, the phenomenal father from the Woodlands free podcast center in the woodlands texas until next time happy phenomenal fatherhood friday until next time cue the flames mike lowry mike lowry